grab them and browse them. And like I said, we'll have fun with it because most of it is made up, but we'll, we'll see how it works. Okay? Ready to go? Yeah. Okay. Turn in your Bibles. Mark, chapter 13. Mark, chapter 13, verse 32. Mark 13, 32. But of that day or hour, no one knows, not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, notice that, underline it, nor the Son, but only the Father. Take heed, watch, for you do not know when the time will come. And what he's talking about, these are words that are put into Jesus' mouth. We've studied Mark and the Gospels and when they were written, and these are all looking backward and putting words into Jesus' mouth. And he is talking about the end time, his return. Did you notice the little phrase that I underlined that even Jesus doesn't know when he's coming back? Even Jesus doesn't know. Only who knows? If you read the passage, who's the only one who knows? The Father. I thought the Father and Son were co-equal. <laughs> of the same substance. <laughs> the Trinitarian doctrine kind of goes downhill here a little bit. But anyway, Jesus says, I don't know, the angels don't know, nobody knows, but the Father. But take heed, watch, be ready, prepare, because you don't know when the time is going to come. Now, turn to Matthew 24:36. Matthew 24, 36. And it gets basically the same thing here, but I just want to underscore it. Matthew 24, 36. But of that day, and that day, when you're talking about that day, the end times, the latter days, we're all talking about, all those verses are talking about the second coming or the end times. But of that day and hour, no one knows, not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but the Father only. As it were in the days of Noah, so it will be with the some coming of the Son of Man. I'm going to stop there for just a moment. So what we have here is a principle that no one knows the exact time. So when people, and, and many of the fundamentalists will scoff at people, who come and say, well, Jesus is going to come in this day, at this month, at this year. Because they maintain that that's an, not a biblical position to take. You cannot know exactly when. Now, that's also a neat little dodge on their part because they can never predict when Jesus is going to come. So that always keeps everybody on a hook <laughs> as to whether or not when Jesus is going to come back. So knowing the exact day, time, hour, and year is basically a no-no. Okay? But, let's take the next step. Since you're in Matthew 24, turn to uh, just up on uh, top of that, verse 32. From the, from the fig tree, learn its lesson. As soon as its branch becomes tender and puts forth its leaves, you know that the summer is near. So also, when you see all these things, you will know that he is near at the very gates. Truly I say to you that this generation will not pass away until all these things take place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. Okay, here we go. Since we can't know the exact time and date, what Jesus is apparently saying here is, we can know the seasons. As any good Iowa boy or girl would know, we can know the seasons, can't we? There will eventually be a spring, right? There will be a thaw, the snow will melt, the grass will turn green again, there will be a summer that will turn hot, there will be a fall, the leaves will change, and there will be a winter again, and the leaves will fall, and then the earth will become dormant and the snow will fall. So just as you can know a season, 
So you can know an approximate time when Jesus comes back. That's their game. Jesus will come back, and you can know by certain signs, just like with the seasons, when Jesus is coming back. Now, what's interesting about this verse, and the reason I picked it, is this little saying that he made here. Truly I say to you that this generation will not pass away until all these things uh, take place. Now, early in the writings of the New Testament, there was a belief that Jesus was going to come back real soon. Real soon. And it didn't happen. So you have three phases of eschatology in the Gospels. The first phase is in Mark, and we'll see another <coughs> statement here in, in Paul in just a moment, which says Jesus is coming soon, right away. There's no signs. It will be sudden. You won't know. He'll just be here. Pow! And it will happen within a generation. Notice what Jesus says. This generation will not pass away. Now, there's a problem. Um, Jesus was not obviously all knowing because he screwed up this prophecy. <laughs> We've mentioned this before. Because he predicted that there would be people who would not die that he was talking to. And that didn't happen. Now, the today's fundamentalists take the next step. Well, Jesus didn't come back <laughs> right away, did he? So now what we have is called delayed eschatology. Jesus is going to be a little delayed. Uh, <laughs> years? Okay, what do you say? Um, and we're going to explain that away in just a few minutes. Because Jesus can only come back when certain signs take place. Um, there is a third phase of eschatology in the New Testament Gospels. It's called realized eschatology. That is to say, Jesus has already come back. You didn't know that, did you? When Jesus rose from the dead, he came back. And when he went to heaven, he sent the Holy Spirit to the church and, and filled people with the Holy Spirit. And that became the second coming realized in the lives of people at that time and for all time. And what is called the millennial rule is really the church rule throughout all of time. So instead of Jesus physically, actually they ran into a problem. Since Jesus wasn't coming back, they began to spiritualize the second coming and uh, made it allegorical and made it kind of metaphorical and said that, well, Jesus is coming back spiritually speaking and has come back and the kingdom of God is on the earth. It's in the church, happened to be in the Catholic church. <laughs> as opposed to the Eastern Church or the Coptic Church and some of the other churches, but it was primarily the Catholic Church. And that's the rule and reign that they interpret. So there's called amillennial, premillennial, and postmillennial. So what we have here is a statement that there's going to be a generation that will not die, but will see Jesus come back. Now turn to 1 Corinthians 15. First Corinthians. Go past Acts and Romans. And you find First Corinthians 15. And by the way, if there are questions, feel free to raise them. But so First Corinthians 15, verse 51. Paul writes, and this is probably a legitimate Pauline letter. Paul writes in 1 Corinthians 15, 51, Lo, I, give, I tell you a mystery. Mystery is the Greek word. It's something that is hidden behind a curtain and is now about to be revealed. So he says, I'm telling you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, in the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound and the dead will be raised imperishable, and we shall be changed, for this perishable nature must put on the imperishable, and this mortal nature must put on immortality. When the perishable puts on the imperishable, and the mortal puts on the immortality, then shall come to pass the saying as it was written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy victory? O death, where is thy sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who gave us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 51 is a mystery. 
Nobody knows. 